Why are people afraid of computers? They bite. And now it's the time of human-computer interaction with Ilya. Hello, everyone. My name is Ilya. I'm the head of the Human-Computer Interaction Master's program. And I'm here to tell you more about what we're studying uh, in this very interesting and straining um, uh, area. Our program is about emphasizing the design and creation of technology for the benefit of people. And I think this is really the core of what our program is about. We put the person, the human, the user, the client in the center of everything that we do and we try to shape technology so that our users, our customers can be as productive, as creative as, it, as they can be and this is all achieved by the technology and the tools that we design for them. In our program we are really about three core things. We are research driven, we, are, uh, we have a strong foundation in theory and um, we take kind of the process, the design process very deeply. Um, we explore it in a very systematic and uh, um, thorough way. And we are future driven, we're focused on the future. I like to think about the things that we're researching and designing in our program as something that will go on the market in 10 to 15 years. So if that's really something that you're into, shaping the way people will use technology in the short to midterm future, then kind of this is the program for you. Our program is very diverse. The students that come to study with us come from very different backgrounds. And this really comes from the nature of HCI uh, and its origins. Um, and this is reflected in our student body. So you will see colleagues, you will interact with colleagues who come from, of course, computer science or software engineering. So very much on the technical side of things. You will encounter people who come from design or artistic backgrounds. So they are more kind of creative and, uh, and open-minded in everything that they, they explore. But you can also encounter people who come from, let's say, social sciences or psychology, behavioral sciences, and even people who study semiotics, who study language, all of them come together to work together um, as colleagues, as um, team members, to come up with crazy and exciting ideas that will change the way we use technology in the future. On this slide, you will see the structure of our program. Um, it's really uh, about several building blocks. It's really modular. Um, we have university, wide courses, something um, that every student in Tallinn University needs to take and that's uh, an interdisciplinary project where you will get a chance to encounter with students, with colleagues from other schools at our university. Then um, we have a set of harmonization courses because our students come from very different backgrounds. We want in the very first semester to get them more or less or to get you more or less on the same level. Let's say you come from a design or art background, you want to learn more about uh, programming and software development, then we have a course for you. Or vice versa, if you want to learn more about design, then there's a course for you as well. Um, so that by spring, by the second semester, all of you are more or less on the same level and at least have a common vocabulary to share with you. And then there's a, a foundation course which teaches you more about the origins of the field, um, the different th theories and how they have been shaped and introduced into HCI, how they have been applied, and also a course on uh, research methods. And then you go on to core courses, which um, is something we call the interaction design project. And this is a very hands-on experience where you will go from um, a problem statement or an opportunity or a, a design challenge to ideating, creating a design concept, and finally designing, developing, and thoroughly testing it with users. By the end of the semester, by the end of the first year, you will have your first um, thoroughly created um, interactive uh, artifact, interactive product. Then you can choose your own path. So if you're really focused or really interested in exploring how interactions and user experiences are shaped on a personal level, on a micro level, then um, you can take a set of courses that go into 
shaping um, experiences module. If you're more interested into kind of a broader perspective, a mic macro perspective, you want to explore how the technologies that we design influence people and societies and behaviors and even governments, then you can take um, a complementary set of courses which is focused on shaping societies. And then finally, um, you can have uh, a possibility to shape your path through a different set of um, electives that we're offering. And also you'll get a chance to do um, industry internship, industry placement, by uh, either doing um, uh, practice or internship in one of the local uh, companies or startups in Estonia, or going um, abroad to one of the uh, companies located in, in another um, European country through uh, an Erasmus internship. And the final semester of your studies will be devoted to your master thesis. And your master thesis needs to be um, embedded within one of our research teams. And we have four for you to choose from. So you can have, if your heart lies more to one or the other, you can pick and choose and, um, and uh, focus on one of them. So the first one is um, about design theory methodology. So if you're really interested in understanding how the design process can be studied further or can be uh, shaped um, for uh, the different challenges or, and different new conditions that we're uh, encountering every day as our life uh, evolves and our, as our usage of technology evolves, then this is the topic for you. Here you'll not only kind of design theories and models and new processes, but you also can design uh, toolkits that will help people um, and designers do their job better. Another topic which is quite interesting, I think, is user experience. Um, you probably have heard the term before, but here's a chance for you to really play and go deep into the topic. Um, here you'll be working mainly on um, surveys, questionnaires, scale development. Um, through um, two different paths, you can either focus on trust in computing or you can focus on uh, aesthetics of uh, interaction. The third topic, which is um, quite forward thinking is um, neurophysiological computing. And here you have a chance to imagine how, let's say, artistic experiences can be shaped by um, wiring people up. So if you're really into that, if you're really interested in how, what makes our bodies and our brains tick, then this is a topic for you to really explore how we operate on a physiological level and how our body signals can be used to interact with computers and to eventually interact with audiences, let's say, or with, um, to communicate over distances. And finally, the fourth topic that we're um, supporting is a body-centric interactions. So if you're really interested in exploring how to design wearables, how to design smart garments, how to design uh, interfaces that go on, around, or inside your body, and how they work as constellations, how they integrate together, um, to offer these seamless, integrated experiences, that this is the topic for you. Now, what are we looking for, or what kind of candidates we're looking for? I already mentioned that we kind of are quite diverse um, in terms of the background of our students, but we mainly focus on three main backgrounds. So we encourage you to apply if you come from either computer science or, let's say, software engineering or hardware engineering background. If um, you come from a design or artistic background, or if you come from social or behavioral sciences background. So one of these three. Um, you need to present, in order to apply, you need to present your academic transcript. You need to present um, your CV um, to, to demonstrate your past academic and professional experiences. You will need to present uh, a situated motivation letter so not only explaining why would you like to come and study with us in Estonia, but actually selecting one of the topics that I presented to you before and exploring in depth how you could tackle that topic for your master thesis with examples and references to current um, state-of-the-art uh, projects from either academia or industry. So to demonstrate that you're really aware of the current trends, of the current developments, um, of the topic that you selected and to, to show that you're really into exploring it further. And finally, depending on your background, if you come from a technical background, we will ask you to, um, to 
to pass a technical exam. This is for us to understand if you really have the technical skills, you really have what it takes to develop stuff. Um, or if you come from a design background, then you need to present a design portfolio. If you come from a social behavioral sciences background, there's also a portfolio, but it's more of a research portfolio. You need to demonstrate the past research projects that you have done before, maybe in your previous studies, maybe in your bachelor studies, let's say, um, to explore different behavioral societal processes that you have explored and to show how you used different methodologies to, uh, to, to learn more about, again, what makes people tick. So we will assess you also in terms of three things. We will assess you in terms of your quality of previous studies and your past professional experiences. Sometimes it happens that people switch um, the fields uh, in the, uh, what, from what they studied before into what they ended up doing professionally. So we will, of course, take this into account. We will assess your motivation as demonstrated by your motivation letter and your eagerness and seriousness about kind of selecting a topic and really wanting to pursue, uh, pursue it in, in depth and your skill set. So we will want to understand if you really have what it takes to, um, to design or develop um, interactive experiences in our master's program. So um, once you're in, uh, what do you get to play with? We have a number of different labs um, that support our teaching and research activities. And we have a number of different materials and tools that we're also um, using on a day-to-day -day basis. So you might go from a very kind of tangible um, paper-based analog artifacts, like, like pen and paper and different templates, um, sketching or whiteboarding, um, using the whiteboard to kind of design different low fidelity prototypes. But you can also go very tangible uh, if you're interested in, let's say, embedded and uh, wearable computing, then you can play with Arduinos, you can play with sensors and actuators and, and um, different microcontrollers, program them, integrate them in, in, uh, in different form factors, put them on the body, see how they, um, what kind of experiences they enable. If you're interested in exploring the user experience and studying it, measuring it, then we have a range of different platforms. We have a whole user experience lab that is devoted to very kind of precise lab experience to allow you to see where people gaze, um, either in a fixed position in, uh, in front of a screen or let's say in the wild where you put this mobile um, eyeglasses, um, eye tracking glasses and you let's say take your your uh, users to say a, sh a supermarket or an open area and you see where how they navigate that environment. And also different uh, mobile wearable devices that allow you to measure people's um, emotional levels. And if you're really interested in exploring um, how the, the person's brain works and how you can use the signals in our brain to control um, the computer, then you can either go for some uh, low level um, devices like this headband that is less intrusive, or if you really want to go into much detail, you can put gel in people's head and put the, uh, this helmet that, uh, that you see on the, on the slide and really get a very thorough understanding of the different um, uh, signals that our emotions are triggering in our brains and see how you can use them to foster different experiences. So really a range of different materials, a range of different tools and resources for you to play with for your different projects um, and um, um, different, um, different experiences that you're pursuing. So um, with that, I will wrap up. If you have any additional questions about the admin process, um, uh, please write, please send an email to hci-studies at tlu.e and our admin person will answer them. If you have any questions about the content of the program and you want to learn more about the different courses, please contact me. My email is on the slide and I will be happy to address any of your questions and to see you eventually in the admissions process and eventually as part of our students. Good luck and hope to see you soon in the admissions interview. Have fun. <laughs>